You know what? I think I'm going to do something slightly different. I am going to show you some brown algae to help you with your assignment a little bit. So I'm not going to tell you about the characteristics of these organisms. You're going to look that up yourself, but at least let me show you what some of them look like and what, where they grow. They really grow in some cool places. This is laminaria. This is one of the kelp. It has these big, long blades on it. These things get very large. We'll have some, you know, maybe four to this side. I hope we have some big, that big in the lab, but they get much bigger than that. Blades that are much longer than I am. They have blade and they have this little stalk down here in stipe. Very tough organisms. They grow in, in waves and very tough hold fast at the bottom. So they grow out in um, areas that are keep moving. This is um, one that looks like a little palm tree. The size of this is, there may be about this big. I'll show you on the next slide, Polsteria. We don't have this in lab, unfortunately. Um, here it is, this cap for the, you know, it's, it's a typical cap for a thing about maybe that size uh, there. So this was on the California coast. I had an opportunity four years ago now to give a, uh, give a talk in the Los Angeles area. And after that, I drove up the California coast on Route 1 to visit a colleague up in San Francisco. And along the way, I stopped and took pictures of these kelp because they're all up and down the coast in California. So that was that palm tree looking like one. And there's people actually harvesting it. It looked really, it looks like a that looks like Bilbo there, doesn't it? Something in the, out of the Hobbit. Completely <laughs> surreal habitat. But that's not, I mean, that's real. That's a real place. You can go, they go out and they, har they can harvest these things. Here's Macrocystis. This is in the sand out on the beaches. It, this is very, these are very large. You don't have a good sense of the scale here. But these blades are something like this. That. So it's really not that far off of its true size on that diagram there. These little things here, these are floats that help it stay upward and it would be rooted down at the base. Neurocystis, this is a, again something you might see on the California coast there. Here it is in the water. It's got this big float at the top and then it would, the old fast would be down here. They've all been swirled around by the wave action and the blades have been sheared off in that case. Here they are. This is looking down the coast from California. I took this one also. All of this, that's <coughs> all brown algae. All that, that's all kelp on the coast of this. So it's the whole coast from Los Angeles up to San Francisco is like that. It's a very beautiful coast. I mean, the rocky coast line with this beautiful algae there. Neurocystis, it's that same one we just saw again. That's a North Carolina driver's license to give you an idea of the size. Okay. So they're big, or they're really big organisms. Here we go. So that's it out there. This is a very calm day, so it's got to survive in the that wave kind of action. in rough weather. And you see why it gets broken up like this. And you'll see when you come to lab next week how tough these things are. I'll show you. We'll do a little demonstration for you. These are incredibly tough organisms. And they have to be to survive. Not just that, but... So, it's breaking there. The algae's out here. Right? So just outside those breakers, you've got all that brown algae got to hold on and survive through that. And this is not a rough day. Yeah, there's little pieces of it down there on the front. These kelp um, beds form kelp forests, and they're very important breeding grounds for fish. So they are incredibly diverse areas of the California coast, very important breeding grounds for fish, seals, Sea otters all live within those in 
incredibly productive ecosystems of these really beautiful places. Sometimes the kelp get washed up on the shore and they get real, some of these really big kelps come up there and lots of tourists come to uh, look at these things. Here's a close up of one of them. <laughs> See they have these large air bladders at the front <laughs> of the kelp that keeps them suspended in the water. Like that. Now you're not going to believe me that this really is South Carolina with um, fucus. This is the brown algae. This is so they occur on the east coast too, but they tend to be um, floating on the east coast. So you've heard of the Sargasso, Sargasso Sea, an area in the Atlantic where um, the currents are kind of swirly. That is it's a very big area, but what I mean is that the Gulf Stream runs around it and there's this area of not a lot of currents and a lot of algae, floating algae occur there and the genus Sargassum and the genus Fucus are two of those floating brown algae that occur. And under certain circumstances, this my father used to live down on the South Carolina coast and one year we were down there and the coast was just covered like that. This is all brown algae, this is all the genus Fucus. It had washed up on huge amounts of it, had washed up through um, the, this is not, this is the open ocean, but it's also a um, bay. So it's a very large bay that had to come through to get up on the ocean. So you can see those out there. 